Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we'll dive in and take a look into an NBA player with so much potential who's one of the deadliest scorers in the NBA. But is he on the wrong team? Bill is scoring the highest in the league, averaging 34.9 points per game. But is this enough for the Wizards to beat the odds of being playoff contenders this season? Today's topic is, how good is Bradley Bill? But before we get into the video, click on that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So before Bill became the walking bucket he is now, he attended Chaminade College Prep School in St. Louis, Missouri. He played for the under-16 USA team in 2009 and the under-17 US team in 2010 and led both of the teams to a gold medal. In his last year of high school, he averaged 32.5 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 2.8 assists per game. He was recognized as the top high school basketball player in 2011 and won the Mr. Show Me Basketball Award. He was also named the 2011 Gatorade National Player of the Year and was a McDonald's All-American. With the numbers he put up being a 6'4 shooting guard, Bill was highly recruited. He decided to commit to the University of Florida to play for Billy Donovan. His freshman year, he was named the SEC All-Freshman Team and the All-SEC First Team. The Gators advanced to the Elite Eight in the NCAA Tournament but were eliminated. After his first college season, he decided to declare for the 2012 NBA Draft. Bill was a top draft prospect and was picked third overall by the Washington Wizards. He had his first career high of 24 points early in the season. He was chosen to participate in the Rising Stars competition and the 2013 All-Star Weekend. He suffered from a season-ending injury, only playing in 56 games, but he was named to the NBA All-Rookie First Team and was a candidate for Rookie of the Year. The 2013-2014 season, Bill became the youngest player to participate in the three-point shootout. He helped the Wizards earn a playoff spot, which hasn't been done since 2005, but they were defeated by the Bulls in the first round. In the 2014-2015 season, the Wizards made it to the playoffs again and Bill scored a playoff career high, 28 points in Game 1, and then he topped his high in Game 4, scoring 34 points. They went on to lose the series in 6 games, but this was definitely an accomplishment for the Wizards making it farther than they did in the previous season. But unfortunately, in the 2015-2016 season, he battled injuries after injuries. This was the most games that he's ever had to sit out, and due to his inability to play, the Wizards didn't make it to the playoffs this year. With the little games that he did play, he had a career-high averaging 17.4 points per game. So Bill continued to be loyal to the team who drafted him, and he re-signed with the Wizards for the 2016-2017 season. He came ready to play, and for the first time in his career, he scored 30 or more in consecutive games. On November 28th, he recorded a career high and three-pointers and scored a total of 31 points. He recorded his fourth 40-point game on February 24, 2017, but in a loss to the 76ers. Bill became one of three players in NBA history to average 23 points and shot above 40% from the three while only being 23 years old or younger. The Wizards made it to the playoffs this season, and they put up a tough fight and took it all the way to Game 7, but were eliminated. Bill continued to put up numbers in the 2017-2018 season. He scored a season-high 40 points and then topped it scoring 51 points. But how useful is it to bring those numbers to the table and still lose in the end? Bill became the youngest player in NBA history to have 700 made three-pointers. And that shows how efficient of a scorer he really is. It took the league a few years, but he was finally named an All-Star in the 2018 All-Star Game, and arguably, it probably would have happened sooner if he had been on a winning team. He continued to put up the numbers, but the Wizards continued to lose. They made the playoffs and went up against the Toronto Raptors. He put the team on his back and helped tie the series at two apiece, but they ended up losing in six games. 
In the 2018-19 season, Bill broke the franchise record for the most three-pointers in a career, passing up Gilbert Arenas with 869. He also joined the club with Oscar Robinson to have multiple games of 40 points, 15 assists, and 10 rebounds in a season. He finished the season averaging a career-high 30.9 points. In April 2019, he became the first player in franchise history with 2,000 points, 400 rebounds, and 400 assists in a season and also the first to average at least 25 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists playing in all 82 games for a second consecutive season. Yeah, 26 in the first half for Beal. Westbrook to Beal. And Beal gets the roll, of course. He's got 32 now. Bertans and, and Westbrook and, and, and Rolo. I'm going to throw Robin Lopez into that equation as Bradley Beal doesn't. He, he just picked up where he left off. If the Sixers win tonight, it will be the 950th win for Doc Rivers in his coaching career. Beal, again, 37. Going into the 2019-2020 season, Bill signed a two-year contract extension with the Wizards. He scored 44 points in consecutive games, but once again, both games didn't result in a win. He was still going strong with scoring in any way possible, and he became the first player since Kobe in 2007 to score 50 points on consecutive nights. He came close to a scoring title, averaging 30.5 points per game, but was outdone by another deadly scorer, James Harden. The NBA season came to a stop and restarted in Orlando in the bubble, but he had to have shoulder surgery and missed the restart. So now currently, Bill has been in trade talk along with James Harden. The only difference is that he wasn't vocal about wanting to be traded like Harden was, but teams are watching him and starting to circle around like a bunch of hungry sharks. He wants to spend his entire career in Washington, but he seems to be coming to his breaking point. Right now, he's leading the league in scoring, averaging 34.9 points per game, and he's become the fourth player in 45 years to score at least 25 points or more in his first games of the season. He's shooting 52.6%, which is higher than his past two seasons. Pretty much when Bill isn't in the game, things get bad, and this is even with Westbrook on the floor. Even with Brad and Westbrook, the Wizards have only an 11% chance of making the playoffs. And keep in mind with all the work Bill's been putting in, he's never been named to an all-NBA team, which is very hard to believe. This is the true definition of an underdog and that the Wizards are only holding him back from his prime. 58% overall. By the time it was all over, he would finish with a career-high 55 points, which is even more remarkable when you consider that just the night before, he had dropped 53 points against the Bulls. Even in a world of inflated scoring, two 50-plus games on a back-to-back? -back? That's ridiculous. It's rare enough that it's only been done six times in the entire history of the league, and the last time anyone did it was, of course, Kobe Bryant in 2007. The Beals' accomplishment came on the same day Kobe was memorialized in Los Angeles was not lost on anyone. Terrible, honestly. Uh, I'm a winner, so you, know, you could throw those 55 out with the last 53. There you go. Bill did also say he still hopes the Wizards can be a playoff team, and in the East, it's not a totally crazy thought. The Wizards are in the nine spot right now, although they are four games behind Orlando in the loss column. Could they really make that up with just 26 games left on the schedule? The problem is they would need a lot of those mini battles to go their way. And as we saw last night, well, we saw just how that goes. It's a hopeless situation, and the only way for him to win is to have a new start somewhere else. Honestly, Bradley Bill should have a lot more accomplishments under his belt with all the years that he's been in the NBA. He's stuck in the same situation that Anthony Davis was in in New Orleans, so maybe he should follow in 80s footsteps and just move on. And after the game, he was not pleased. You know, I'm pissed off and mad. You know, I don't count. Any of my, you know, the career highs have been losses, so, you know, I don't give a damn. We threw it right out the window with the other two or three I had. I just want to win, you know. Sometimes it forces me to score 50, 60, whatever the case may be, but I just want to win or whatever it looks like, so. I came up a little short tonight. It's great to have loyalty because that is a lost art in the NBA nowadays, but you got to know when to move on and what's best for your own career.
Thanks for tuning in to watch today's video as we looked at how good is Bradley Bill. If you enjoyed it, click on that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.